Welcome to the instructional in preparation for the measured building workshop. It is important that you are well organized for the measuring activity to ensure that the drawings you walk away with in the end are comprehensive and good enough to translate into a neat and accurate set of drawings when you get back to the studio. In architectural practice, you could be asked to measure a building and then give the raw measurements and drawings for someone else to draw up. It's a good principle to keep in your mind that someone else may have to use and read your drawings and therefore you will need to ensure that the drawings are clearly represented and coordinated so that a third party can interpret them easily. The basic equipment you'll need for the workshop is a retractable metal tape, a clipboard and paper or a hardback sketchbook. Tracing paper may be useful to work over drawings on site. The fibre tip pen is probably better out on site. Bring pens in at least two different colours so that you can colour code different aspects of the drawings. Say, you can make the drawing in black and write the dimensions in red. Photographing the building is also very useful as a cross-referencing tool, but should not be a surrogate for making thorough drawings on site. Be thoughtful with the photos you make. Concentrate on orthogonal or planar views to give an overall shape and scope of the building and then focus on the details and the way that different elements relate to one another. In this instance, and also in architectural practice, it is common to work as a team when measuring a building. The simple task of holding the tape is often a two-person job in itself. When working in larger teams of five to six, make sure that you agree on what each team member will be doing. Work in sub-teams of two, be clear about the types of drawings you want everyone to make and establish similar styles of drawing. Come together throughout the measure up and check the drawings are consistent between the sub-teams. At the end, make sure that the drawings are thoroughly cross-referenced so that when everyone gets their drawings back in the studio, they can read between the drawings. When starting the measure up, try and develop an understanding of the logic of the building in the first instance. Take the time to make proportionally accurate drawings of the different orthographic views of the building. Only use three-dimensional representations to show details and connections. Try to identify the primary structure of the building, that is the posts or the main walls that hold up the roof and main elements. Draw these first and build the rest of the drawing around it. Identify what are secondary and tertiary elements and be strategic whether or not you want to show all the detail in the one drawing. Sometimes it would be better to concentrate on the overall bones of the building in one view and then zoom into detail on other drawings. Too much detail on the one drawing will mean too many measurements which could then be difficult to interpret later. In this example we are measuring and drawing up a simple riverside pavilion. Some things to note in this drawing is that the primary structure and the structural grid are clearly shown and dimensioned. If you get the primary grid right first, then the rest of the detail will fall into place. Note that we have shown the centre lines of symmetry so that we can reconstruct the drawing geometrically rather than relying just on the measurements. You do not need to draw in all the detail. You can see here that there is an edge of timber framing and boards. Instead of drawing each board, we have indicated the overall quantity of the timber boards and their individual sizes. One final thing to note is that when we draw older buildings in particular, it is often useful to take diagonal measurements of a room or structure as many old buildings will move and the space will warp over time. In this example, instead of drawing all the detail on the first plan, we concentrated on the critical set out dimensions. In this second drawing of the plan, we have added more detail. Here we have shown the alignment of the roof and the overhang. Ideally, we would have included some measurements of the overhang in this drawing, but it is picked up later in the section. We have identified tertiary elements such as the balustrade and codified them. In this case, the balustrade seems to be all of the same type, so we have written type 1 balustrade or T1. We could then draw a typical detail of T1 on another drawing and cross-reference it to this drawing. In this instance, we know the extent of T1 balustrading, but we don't have to draw the detail all the time on every drawing. To be able to draw a building, we really need to understand the building. For timber frame buildings, it is useful to sketch out the framing elements of the floor and note those on the, a structural plan. This will help 
complete other drawings, especially the detail section. Though it is usually impossible to get onto the roof of the buildings we are drawing, we still draw the profiles based on what we can see from the ground. For smaller buildings, we should be able to understand and draw the main geometry of the roof and the main materials. Here we have shown the falls, ridges and hips of the roof. We have also noted the roofing materials and the location of elements such as downpipes and so on. Many of the timber pavilions we will be measuring up will have the roof structure exposed. The exposed roof structure is part of the beauty and character of these buildings. It is important to pay close attention to the roof structure and spend the time understanding the ordering of the elements and their respective sizes. Most structures have a logic and pattern to them. It is usual that the elements such as rafters and purlins will have an even spacing. So there was usually no reason to measure each spacing, but just to note the average. Here you can see we have also shown that the rafters are spaced at 750 millimeters center to center. We have also named the elements and codified them so that we can make a table on the side of the drawing and note down the size of the elements rather than writing the size on each of the elements. Sections are perhaps the most important drawing as they round out the logic of how the buildings come together. Make sure you identify the main structural elements and dimension the set out. By taking a series of vertical heights you can calculate roof falls and so on through trigonometry. Note again that we have not drawn all the detail of the balustrade in this drawing. Rather, we have codified the elements and we will draw and measure these elements in a separate detailed drawing. The elevations are important to bring all of the main parts of the building together. But they can be tricky as overhangs can sometimes make the structural set out unclear. You would typically construct the elevation from your plan and section drawings so make sure that the plan and section drawings are thoroughly drawn and dimensioned. Elevations typically don't have many dimensions on them, but they do show how the elements are proportioned and they, how they come together overall. Finally, we can make detailed drawings of tertiary elements such as screens, seats and balustrades on separate drawings. In this way, we can put more detailed information on the drawings without cluttering the main drawings. It is important to have a method of cross-referencing so that you can construct the full drawings back in the studio. Separating out detailed drawings is also a good way of dividing tasks amongst your team. This now completes the measured drawing instructional. The intention here is to give you some tips and pointers, but the main learning will occur when you get out and do it for yourself. Be prepared and try and understand the logic of the building first before just launching into measuring things. Measure the primary structure first and then concentrate on the details between. So, good luck.